So when it comes to emulation, games will always have a level of input latency or input lag. This is due to a number of reasons, uh, some being the efficiency of the emulator or the hardware itself, and it even you know might have something to do with the operating system you're using. So basically, if you're not using real console hardware, input lag is just something you're going to have to live with and deal with. Casual players will be unaffected, they'll, you know, they'll probably never notice, but if you count frames in games like Street Fighter or if you're a speedrunner, input delay could mean the difference between a perfect win and a game over screen. So RetroArch has a built-in feature called Run Ahead that can, to some degree, reduce a proportion of input lag. While it isn't perfect as, you know, real hardware, it does help a little. So in order to set it up, open up RetroArch, go to Settings, and then go to Latency. And then you want to go down to run ahead to reduce latency and switch that to on. You'll notice it's revealed three hidden settings. The first one being number of frames to run ahead. Now it's currently set to one as default. However, you are able to go up to a maximum of 12 frames. Now, if you go straight to 12 and you know, while in theory, this may seem like a really good idea, if the core you're using doesn't quite support it, there is a chance you may end up with jitter issues. So what I recommend you do is maybe start off with one, play your game, and if it's going well, you know, maybe consider bumping it up to two frames and uh, so forth, and just keep repeating this process until you get to a, a performance point that you're happy with. However, if you've gone over the number of frames you should uh, be running ahead, you know, consider reducing it and see how your experience goes. The next option is to use a second instance of RetroArch for run ahead. Now, I recommend you switch this to on. So what this does is uses a second instance of RetroArch running in the background. And between this instance and the one in the background, they split the calculations for video and audio processing. And it also splits the loading of save states and the saving of save states between the two cores and with some magical combination of the two it can help reduce any input lag and the last one is hide run ahead warnings i've got this set to off because you know if there are any warnings i want to see them uh, one thing to be aware of is run ahead is only effective if the core you're using actually supports save states uh, if it doesn't support save states then run ahead won't really make a difference also if your computer is a potato i don't recommend pushing these settings too far otherwise your machine might struggle a little bit and you may actually get worse performance than you did when you had run ahead turned off. So I recommend just try these settings one by one and iterate, you know, increase as you go along or decrease as you see appropriate. And as I said earlier, if you're a casual player, you may not, you know, notice a difference at all. But anyway, in the comment section, please do drop your, what your performance experiences have been like. Let me know what hardware you're using. And by that, I mean, you know, the RAM processors, GPUs, you know, I'd love to hear about, you know, what kind of experiences you've been having and which games you've been using Run Ahead for. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.